It's been about 4,300 miles since I put these on in January. You might say, hey, that is a lot of driving. You would be right. But we are out here at Tahuya today because I wanted to kind of showcase what these tires can do off-road. Usually whenever I come out here, I don't have time to actually video most of the stuff that I'm doing, maybe with my cell phone and stuff like that. But today I brought my equipment with me so then that way we can showcase these tires properly. <laughs> I do want to say that I did receive these from Falcon for free to test out on the Rivian. I have a standing relationship with them over the past few years that I provide media for them in exchange for, say, a review. And they are unbiased. I am very happy to get them, but I've also been complaining to them in their DMs like, dude, I'm losing so much range. I hate this so much. It wasn't that serious. It had a lot, my range hit, actually it had a lot to do with the cold weather, me using my heat, the tint on the back, and the tires. So yes, they did contribute to the range loss. But they are amazing, I promise you. I'm gonna give you a quick, too long, did not read as it tracks my face. These tires are great. They handle the rain amazingly. They handle off-road, great. They handle snow, great. Ice, okay. The one thing that it had a little bit of weird stuff with would be like right when it rains and you have some powdery dirt per se and it turns into mud but then like less than an inch underneath is dry sand dirt whatever i did have a little slippy boy action with that and that's the only time that i've had issues with these tires besides the balancing i am pretty hard-headed i could buy something to help deflate this, but I just use my key. During everyday day-to-day -day operations, I keep them at about 60 PSI. Factory is 48 PSI. The Falcons say that you can do up to 80 PSI. I found a happy medium without doing a chalk test of about 60 PSI. I want to show you guys, this is the lowest mode. This is usually what I drive on the freeway with. The suspension is at like nine inches high right now, so. For some vehicles, that might be okay clearance, but we also have off-road mode that gets us up to 14.9 inches of clearance. Best way to show you this is that I'll do a little time lapse right now for you guys to see. That actually didn't work out as planned. I thought it was going to be a lot longer than what it was, but it was not. It was two seconds. To some, that is a lifetime. To others, well, I mean, you guys know. This is what we got with 15 inches of clearance. Well, 14.9. The articulation in the wheels are quite nice, but at the same time, it still keeps us traction for the most part. I might show you guys where I'm going to lose traction today and go three wheeling, almost two wheeling. Let's see if I can get to that part today. But the best times to come to Tahuya isn't during the weekend or a really nice day. It's during the week when it's cloudy, potentially raining. Let's go and have some fun. We're gonna go clockwise around the 4x4 trail. Yeah. Now before, this used to actually be a rock garden and not filled in with dirt. But as you can tell, well, we're good now. Like, there's anyone can go over this. In fact, we had a RAV4 last week go over this, no issue. Now, as for the water, there was a major issue. But that's besides the point. That's not for me to tell that story. I was just there last weekend and I feel like it was a little bit higher than this. But it's not even that deep. This this vehicle, the Rivian R1T, can go up to 38 inches of water, no problem. And so we don't have to worry about an air box getting flooded with water. Don't worry about in you know water getting into the intake, the engine, and or the tailpipe because we ain't, we ain't got them. While I love this little pocket Osmo, I think it's really good for more of vlogging style content more than action style content because it doesn't really zoom in that well like i don't even know if you guys really saw that let me come back for the camera i'm just be bumping so much going to the country gonna eat a lot of peaches you guys you guys can't even see me right now which is hilarious this isn't the main puddle that we're even gonna go through this is just just a fun little get get your get your wheels wet just a little bit you know just 
have some fun frolic in the puddles. That is not me peeing. That is the Rivian leaking all the water. That, that water does not smell great at all. But yeah, nice. So let's talk about my usages of this vehicle because I use it for my Jesus Christmas. And that's why I got PPF and I didn't touch it, that's great. So what I was saying is, I use this vehicle for my business, you know, some daily driving, but I got a Corolla for the daily if I need, like I brought the dogs to the vets this morning in the Corolla. But I pretty much use this Rivian for almost everything that I do, including off-road content like I am right now, and using it to go from house to house because of the real estate media company that I own. So there's a lot of highway driving, that's why I put on like what, what I say, 4,300 miles? onto this thing and that's where it hurts on the highway because i tend to go 70 miles per hour or so and we drop down especially during the winter we drop down to 1.7 1.7 miles to kilowatt hours whereas if i drop down to 60 miles per hour and actually have like 70 degree weather i'm pushing 2.0 miles to kilowatt hours that's kind of like electric's version of gas mileage so the bigger the number the better the gas electricity usages so how does this tire handle you know doing toyota tacoma or jeep things let's see now if you have a rivian i don't recommend doing this like i have a potential to break this rivian right now by breaking the bumper or something i i don't know so here we go we're on it a little bit of accelerator and then there we go so we could do tacoma things right all right b-roll shot i do love the cameras in this thing gives you the side cameras both going backwards and frontwards but i'm able to see what's in front of me it's not like i got a huge hood it's just you just can't see sometimes but that's okay and then going from side to side you could go over little obstacles make sure you're not stabbing into a tree branch that's sticking out or getting hung up on a rock whenever you're out here. The last thing I ever really want to do is become a trail blocker. Now, I've come out here many times with my forerunners. I've actually came out here three, four times with the Rivian, so I know it can handle it. But it would just be super embarrassing if someone would be like, look at the Rivian, it's stuck. Look at this piece of poop. It's like a turd, but we're not that. So, this thing is always interesting, this uh, DJI Osmo pocket three like i wanted to look at the things that i'm pointing it at but i'm sure it's a setting but instead i have to force it to do things that i want it to do by angling it certain oh like i don't want that i want straight ahead but it's not giving it to me straight ahead that being said this section right here actually seems a little bit for those who haven't gone through areas like this seems a little bit treacherous but we had a forerunner, a stock forerunner, stock hide and everything with some predator steps come through here. Predator, predator, predator steps come through here. Cleared it. No problem. I am doing right now just getting the drone because I just kind of want to see the footage of this stuff. I have the ability to create some very nice 4K footage, but a lot of this stuff with the off-road and outdoors kind of thing, I want it to be a little bit more natural. So say like you're coming out here. Yes, the drone is nice. You can buy a cheaper drone. Don't buy this one to do stupid stuff with because it's expensive. It's about $4,000 with its controller and all the accessories and extra batteries and everything. But majority of the time, getting a GoPro out here or even your cell phone on a holder, you can create some pretty awesome content. Because sometimes it's just about the experience. The We're just reformatting the camera right now so that I have enough of footage. It's starting to rain, so... Things are going to get a little bit slippery, which is fine. I was out here the other day whenever it was, actually it was quite sunny, so it wasn't too slippery. So we won't be doing too many dumb things, but we'll record it. But the Rivian handles it, along with the Falcons, quite nice. Like, 
there's not much input that I actually have to put in order for it to go. But here you hear it doing a little bit of slipping because of that rock right there, right? And that is driver error right there. We got some good old trail hazards out here. Not this stump right here, but look at this stick. Now, I was going slow enough to where I was paying attention. Could it puncture a tire? Yes, it could. But check out the muddage right now. It'll come off. The one thing I want to see right here is how well the tire performs after it's wet and muddy over this stump right here, or this root. Let's see. All right. So to put it into perspective where it's at, this is my knee. so. I don't know, half, half a shin? Shouldn't it be too hard, right? Right over, no issue. The only issue is my turning radius. <laughs> and there we go, oof. Let's come here, come, come land. Not there, not on a fucking rock. Now one of the main issues that I do have in this vehicle is how long it is and so being able to use the cameras and navigate how I need to works quite wonders for me. Sometimes I have to back it up. It's like I'm back at the club again. Back in, I, I've never backed it up in the club. I've backed up against a wall so that I red nose. One thing I wanted to mention, we don't have stereotypical lockers nor do we have LSD. I could be misspoken on that. Pop up here if I'm right or not. But each will is controlled by a motor and that motor is controlled by the computer which as you've seen is handling this small stuff perfectly some people are like oh you just took the connector roads but yeah not too shabby right that was funny a little bit of uh slipperage right now due to it being slightly wet outside. That's that's a nice puddle. That's fine. I got Gore-Tex boots on. This is a quick, just a little overview of, you know, the capabilities. One of the Rivian and two of the tires. They're handling it. Remember how it had that mud? Kicked it right out. Quite nice. And I am going to drag that in the vehicle. Oh God, here we go. April yelled at me for going this way. She's like, I couldn't see anything. I hate not being able to see anything. And I forget that. Maybe some people don't have cameras like me. But, I mean, it's it's not too bad, right? And watch, this is my famous last words. I'm going to topple down the hill now. But let's let's see how, what the, what I'm at. 396 right now. Let's see how steep this, well, not really steep. It's, okay, it's about a 13% pitch right now. It's not too shabby. I'm at a 7 9% roll. Uh, that's okay. Everything is fine. The Rivian will handle it. It's just nice. It's doing most of the work by itself but yeah now we are down to 372 so what 20 feet ah, it's fine everything is fine that is one thing that i do love about the all-terrain um off-road features it shows you your compass your elevation that's your normal stuff but it also shows you your pitch and your roll along with your motor temperatures whenever it comes time now you may think that motor temperatures don't matter but it did whenever i was pulling down the forerunner acting as anchor down stampedes pass also that's just what I kind of run on my tires. I don't go down all the way. In fact, a lot of people run 35%. I run 40%. This is this is fine. Oh, this is funny. My vehicle is self-leveling right now. But yeah, so this is what it shows you while you're here. Now, I'm at my highest. Brake regen still high. Stability is on, and the ride is soft. I can turn it to all these other modes, but this is just a mode that I keep it on. In fact, most of the time, I keep it on on-road, all-purpose, because I don't really need too much, but... Having the torque when I need it, the 906 feet pound of torque, is quite amazing. And then other times, I just have these wonderful cameras. Now, they don't record that well. I tried to use the footage before of them, and it, it's like 720. I was like, I can't even upscale this. I mean, I'm probably sure I could, but I didn't want to pay for the program to upscale it. The trail here is marked in uh, purple diamond, per se. 
and it's called the 4x4 loop. This isn't the south loop, this is the old original loop here at Tahuya. And so this normally isn't that deep either, so normal vehicles like stock vehicles can actually cross this no problem. But do you want to actually stand still? I don't know, you might sink. And I am pretty heavy. This vehicle is at 7,000 pounds and I, God, I'm close to 300 pounds. I am putting on muscle, okay, you guys? But, on myself at 300 pounds, then we have my gear, camera gear and stuff like that. That's not that much, it's like 30 pounds. My recovery camping gear, uh, that could be another 100 pounds or so. Um, then we got uh, my tent on the back, which is 150 pounds, but with the bars and everything, so we're probably looking at 160. Then we got my camp kitchen, and I believe that was a little bit at 100. I don't have it all the way pieced together right now. But, she can get heavy fast. Let me show you the, uh, I'm unsure if you can actually see that little purple diamond, but that just marks that you're on the 4x4 trail. So this is why I'm happy I have PPF. I have it on the entire vehicle. One thing I am going to do for you guys, if you've never been out here to Tahuya, I will put a link below on the loop, the 4x4 loop. Like I mentioned, a stock 4Runner can easily do this. A stock Nissan Xterra can also do this. Actually, I think he had a two inch lift, so he, he wasn't really stock. But a Rivian can do this. We do it, we do it so quietly too. Listen, you, you can barely hear us. There's no exhaust. I mean, you have this air sound, which I think is actually just pumped there for you to, for like deaf people to hear you whenever you're driving because they'd be like, oh God, you know how, what is it? <sighs> what vehicles like a Toyota RAV4 has like a UFO sound. I, I mean, even my Kia had like a UFO sound. But besides that, these things are relatively quiet besides when you're on the road. And I will link that video now so you can hear the road noise of these tires. All right, so this is the road noise at 69 miles per hour with the Falcon tires. But through this gravel, through this sandy loam kind of dirt, sandy loam, sandy loam, the tires grip quite nice. And if they start to lose traction, the Rivian kicks in and allows you to gain traction by putting power to other wheels. So it's like an ideal, the Falcon, uh, no, no, I didn't hit anything. It's fine. The Falcon AT4Ws along with the Rivian is like a very amazing combination of tires for both on the road, on slick, rainy roads, on snow, and out here when you're trying to do some four-wheeling, right? Now, again, I am going to preface this that this isn't that serious of four-wheeling, four-buying. This ain't no rock crawling, but we are out here. We're having fun. We are getting our vehicle a little bit muddy, a little bit scratched. Made that right, but that's actually kind of cool. It allows you to come do this. The stock Pirellis also allow you to do this, but with these being E-rated, these will not puncture as easily as the scorpions would. And then we will also talk about, what do you call that? We will talk about the wear and tear that I have witnessed on these. Little quick note, there's not much of any. Whenever I get out the paper, I'll tell you exactly how much I've gone down in tread, but they are great for those who want to actually go out and adventure. Not every Rivian owner wants to go out and adventure, which is a lot of times why they stick with the 21 inch wheels or the 22 inch wheels. Ah, oh, that's kind of close, but we're fine. This is like, so this thing, this Rivian is wider than a Tacoma, but skinnier than an F-150. Oh, let's go. That being said, she is quite long. She's actually longer than my Forerunner that I had. So navigating through these little tree, tree areas can be quite scary. I don't necessarily want to say scary, but we've all seen the articles that say Rivian gets a dent in the side of, oh, okay, can we turn now? Oh, that's actually really close. Try not to hit that tree on the side of us. There we go. Like, hold up here. I don't know if we can actually zoom into that, but that's how close I am to that tree. But we've seen the reports of $40,000 damage to fix insurance bill to fix the Rivian. He will occurs. Oh my God, why are they so bad? Why are Rivians horrible? They're not. So up here we will get out and this is pretty sure. Oh, I see it up here where I did some three wheel in action. And I wanna show you guys, just look straight. Wow, 
It's it's beautiful out here. Like when it's not the weekend and you hear all the ATVs and everything going, it is peaceful. It is your own place. Let's go a little bit more. But yeah, I actually wonder if that was the section that I did some three wheeling before. Everything's fine. This is that section that I'm talking about. Cause right here, I get my wheel in and then the passenger side wheel comes up because it's dipped down here. So we'll set up the camera right there and get some pictures. I love to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Now the reason why we went this way, there was a couple of forerunners that were here the other day, just chilling. And they were all like, is that a Rivian? Look at that, the Rivian's doing something. He's getting it. Made me proud. Made me a proud Rivian owner. I actually want to take a photo of this before we get in and do anything. As I almost bust my ass. So you're going to record a lot. There we go. See, one of the hardest parts. I should discuss that later. It's probably just hearing me heavy breathe right now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I had to come out and take a photo for the gram. Pretty crazy, huh? Still recording. All right, let's get down. Wait, what does it look like from behind? That's what she said. Now the fun part. Can I go from stop like this? Or do I have to back up? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, no. There we go. Just like that. Just a little bit of input. Now I am taking it slow here. And there is a little slippage with it being slick. Along with muddy at the same time. But... Remember, I'm also 7,000 pounds. So if there's any kind of slippage, one could be from that. Even though I am thick as hell. But, you know, we just went through there. I mean, again, nothing big, nothing huge. But it's just sh showing, again, the capability of the tires. Let's get down to the tires. Well, quick was out scratching my hand. We are almost to the point to where we can go into the lake. So that's going to be fun. Let's go to the sky roll. I did bottom out once here, but I was able to easily glide past when the Rivian adjusted its suspension, which is another thing that I love that this thing does. So here we are at the pond, at the lakes, which whatever you would like to call them. But there are two sections. They actually say this one is actually deeper, but I went through it and it wasn't that deep. So let's get the drone set up and then we're going to go through it. Let me show you guys this way. Yeah, so we're just gonna go through and do it for the gram. Today we went through Tahuya to kind of just show live action what these tires can actually do. The, it was today a little bit muddy, but dry underneath, but then muddy, muddy, muddy. And then we had a lot of standing water. We did some three wheel in action, which was fun. But we also went through the, the lake here a couple times because I needed the drone footage. It's besides the point. Let's, let's say this. Would I recommend these tires to a Rivian owner? Yes. And no, Dom, what do you mean by that? If you're just looking for a stock replacement for your Pirellis and you barely do any kind of off-roading, maybe you go down gravel roads every once in a while, maybe you go up to the mountains and go skiing once a year, no, I don't recommend them. If you like to go out adventuring, if you like to go into the mountains, into where it's muddy, into where you need the traction, where you're in the snow and everything like that, yes, I do recommend these tires. They are quite heavier, I think, it was 17 pounds extra per tire. That's pretty That's pretty heavy in comparison to the Scorpion Pirellis or the Pirelli Scorpions. That being said, these are outperforming the Pirellis. Not only are they E-rated, which is why they're heavier, they are more puncture resistant. They handle very well in the rain. I use this as my daily driver slash work vehicle, so I'm constantly driving all the time. And we've been having some rain in the past since January since when I installed these. Amazing. No hydroplane in it at all. And let's, let's actually talk about the wear and tear. They're still 16th out of 30 seconds. That's pretty good. The Scorpions with only having, what did I have? Like 8,000, 9,000 miles? They're early 9 out of 30 seconds. 9, 
30 seconds. I'm not good at math. I have my shoes on, so I can't use them to look. I'm severely impressed with these. So I hope this helps you if you're a Rivian owner and want to purchase these. Even if you're not a Rivian owner and you're like a heavier duty truck or something like that, like a F-250, and you want some nice E-rated tires, some old school tin ply, as they used to call them, these are great. They work quite well. Sorry I didn't go into the techie stuff, but I'm not that techie. I know what I like, and if I hate it, I'll mention it to you. But so far, there's not much that I hate about this Rivian, except for the Rivian itself, when it doesn't work. One thing I want to show you guys is the traction that we have off-road, 0 to 60. Now, this is 835 horsepower, 906 pounds feet of torque. Yeah, so it's going to spin the tires just a little bit. But watch the traction control handle it and still get got to lower the suspension if not i'm stuck at 20 miles per hour and we don't want that there we go in three two that was like zero to 30 but as you can tell i had traction so somewhat you heard it slip just a little bit i can't i can't go too far with this thing for the simple fact there's so many divots and bumps and holes in this road It'd be a little bit sketch to try to go 0 to 60 here. But that is on-road traction. Well, dirt road traction. What do you think? I know, I know. I told you 0 to 60. I lied. 